You're just lying, man. You ought to be shame of yourself. Okay. You condemn them. If I'm they, doing the same thing you wait are. Wait a minute. You condemn them. And that's why I call you a racist, because it means then that how, a Palestinian... How dare you, honestly. If you've been keeping up with coverage of campus protests currently taking place across the country, then I'm sure that you're probably as fed up as I am with the nonstop propaganda and lies about these students. And it's coming from everywhere. All of mainstream media is basically in lockstep on this issue, and they all agree these students are public enemy number one. For example, CNN called them violent and anti-Semitic. MSNBC compared them to the January 6th rioters who tried to overthrow our government. And on top of that, Fox News even said that they were comparable to Hitler youth. Yeah. Now, it's not just the media that's parroting these lies. It's also Democratic Party politicians. For example, one Democratic Party politician, Jared Moskowitz, said that they were akin to the neo-Nazis that marched in Charlottesville in 2017, literally. And of course, the president of the United States is also lying through his teeth about these protesters, saying that they're violent while ignoring the violence being perpetrated against them by pro-Israel agitators and cops. Now, of course, Piers Morgan decided to add to the chorus of media propaganda with a segment of his own about these camps protests. And for the first 15 minutes or so, he spewed the same exact bullshit that we've heard repeatedly about the campus protesters, namely their pro-terrorist anti-Semites making Jewish students feel unsafe. Now, there's multiple problems with this framing. First and foremost, Jewish students are also part of these protests. In fact, on some campuses, they're overrepresented. So he is cynically invoking anti-Semitism to make it seem as if there's some sort of an anti-Semitic lynch mob when that's just factually incorrect. Second of all, if you're going to feign concern about the safety of students, how could you not bring up the violence being committed against these college protesters? Many of them are Jewish. Do you not care about those Jewish students who are also being brutalized specifically by police and pro-Israel demonstrators? Do they not matter? Furthermore, Piers Morgan and all of the media are clutching their pearls about supposedly violent student protesters, but they've had fuck all to say about the violence being committed at universities in Gaza by the IDF. In fact, they've destroyed literally every university in Gaza and posted videos of their demolitions in some instances, and yet we don't hear a fucking peep from anyone in media about that. So the framing is fundamentally dishonest, and that is exactly what both Cornell West and Jen Uger called out on Pierce Morgan's show to his face. So after 15 plus plus minutes of non-stop bullshit from Piers Morgan, here's how they reacted when they finally had the chance to speak. And keep in mind that he was posing this question to a different guest, but Jenk and Cornell couldn't take the bullshit anymore and they decided to just chime in. And uh, here's what they said. But if you have people, and we've seen pictures of them inside and outside campus, who appear to be supporting Hamas rhetoric, who are wearing maybe insignia relating to Hamas or Hezbollah or whatever. If you're brazenly supporting organizations, groups of people that are deemed to be terrorists by large swathes of the world, does that cross the line? This is utter nonsense, Piers. Can I just answer the question? Okay, okay Piers, check. Yep. You, got, you got genocide taking place. You got an IDF terrorism taking place. You can't say a mumbling word about 12 universities that have been leveled to the ground. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of professors have been killed. Students have been killed. You're a journalist. Yes. Have you talked about the 112 journalists who have been killed, brother? Yes, I have you, done. You just said lies. Well, hang on. Well, Cornell, I you actually... Treat the so Cornell, hang on. Hang on. Cornell. Cornell. They're unfair. Cornell. And then you just start lying. You start lying, man. It's ridiculous, Cornell, man. I'm not it's lying about anything. I... You no, money. you are. No, I agree on. with Cornell West completely. You're totally, <laughs> utterly lying through your framing. The now, framing of this may, is a total sorry. Free okay. lie. Look, no, I can't hear you both speak at the same time. Cornell, just to be clear, I have posted... Sorry, hang on. Please. Hang on. I have posted about the journalists who've died in Gaza, right? I have posted about this. I have highlighted the deaths of those journalists. Right? Put it in the framework. Well, I, I'm going to. I was going to come the, to you about the framework. No, you're not. All the vandalism about one hall, and you hardly can say a mumbling word about universities, libraries gone, completely, schoolrooms gone completely. You see how truncated and narrow your framework is? You're just lying, man. You ought to be shame of yourself. Okay.
I have never seen Cornell West that mad before, but I've got to say, seeing him go off on Pierce Morgan like that was incredibly cathartic for me because Cornell West right there was vocalizing all of the frustrations that I feel when I hear these lies by these dumbass propagandists. But notice that Pierce tried to defend himself by saying that he posted about the journalists murdered by Israel, presumably on Twitter, as if that's somehow sufficient when it's not. He is deliberately crafting a narrative and choosing very specific things to focus on, right? It's not just disingenuous framing. It's lying by omission. You don't get credit for fucking tweets if you deny people that crucial context on your massive platform. He knows this, yet he still tries to portray himself as some sort of an objective journalist when he's nothing more than a pro-Israel hack. And this is something that Jank Uger also tried to explain to him. It didn't go well, but nonetheless, Jank Uger made some really great points here. Here's, I've just listened to you for 20 minutes frame the issue in a purely 100% Israeli propaganda way. So if you say, hey, listen, the Jewish students shouldn't be harassed or attacked, of course I agree. I've got so you Jewish agree with family. me, so why have I lied? Yeah, no, no, no. Stop interrupting. But what you don't talk about is you say from the river to the sea is an unacceptable change. Did you mention to the audience in these last 20 minutes that Benjamin Netanyahu actually said it recently? Not only that, he's actually doing it. He's in the middle of wiping out the Palestinians from the river to the sea. That is the grotesque violence. He has slaughtered. 25,000 women and children. They were all innocent. So when Hamas kills 860 innocent Israeli civilians, I call them out and I say that is terrible. But when Israel slaughters 25,000 women and children, we're, we're saying, oh, I don't like a pro-Palestinian chant, a chant. That's what we're concerned about. That right there was such a great point by Jank. These propagandists in media, they really have the audacity to clutch their pearls about supposedly violent chants when they have nothing to say about the actual violence being committed against Gazans. Now, when you talk to students who say from the river to the sea, they will tell you what they mean and it's not genocide. They mean peaceful coexistence and justice for both Palestinians and Israelis in one democratic country. But Israel defenders insist that that's a call for genocide. But apparently when Netanyahu says it, even though he's doing a genocide, as Jank Uger pointed out, media pretends like he's not explicitly using it in a genocidal way. So the context matters, but they don't care about the context. It's just demonize the protesters. That's priority number one. And if we lie in the process, we lie in the process, right? But the question is, why is it only genocidal when Palestinians and students say it, but it's not genocidal when Netanyahu says it, even though he's literally doing that right now. He's doing from the river to the sea, as Jenk pointed out. It's because these pro-Israel propagandists, they don't view Palestinians as equal human beings, which is why they're giving Netanyahu a pass. And therefore, genocide against them can't possibly be committed because you can only do genocide against human beings. And since they don't view Gazans as human beings, that's why it doesn't register to them. And to be clear, Israel defenders are trying to label any and all advocacy of Palestinian human rights as anti-Semitic. For example, a student wearing a keffiyeh at a Georgia State University commencement ceremony was literally escorted away by a cop just because she was wearing a keffiyeh. Now, on top of that, the House just voted overwhelmingly to expand the federal definition of anti-Semitism to the working definition that's used by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, which would effectively designate all criticism of Israel as anti-Semitic. And Kenneth Stern, who literally drafted that definition that they're using, has actually condemned the way that the definition he created has been weaponized to suppress free speech. I mean, even slogans as benign as Free Palestine have been deemed anti-Semitic, not because they're actually anti-Semitic, but because it's an attempt to silence criticism of Israel, because the goal is to suppress any and all pro-Palestinian speech at the behest of Israel. So it's not just about from the river to the sea, right? They don't want people to criticize Israel, so it's all bad. It's all anti-Semitic, according to them. Now, this law that Congress passed, it's not just unconstitutional, but it's dangerous. It literally poses a danger to Jewish people because it downplays the significance of actual anti-Semitism. If you say that criticism of Israel is anti-Semitism and you mix that in with actual anti-Semitic violence that we're seeing, I mean, you are just undermining actual anti-Semitism. You are jeopardizing the safety of Jewish people around the country. It's so ridiculous. So to Jenk's point, the hysteria that we're seeing over pro-Palestinian chants 
isn't just disingenuous and cynical. It's intended to distract all of us from the actual violence being committed against innocent Palestinians in Gaza. Now, this is something that Chris Hayes actually brought up on his program when he was talking about the campus protests. And we don't have time to talk about that today. I would highly recommend that you check that out because that's what this is all about. The hyperfixation on campus protests lets us all avoid the fact that our government is supporting a genocide in Gaza, an onslaught in Rafah right now, where innocent civilians are being murdered. Now, in the next clip, Jenk is going to call out the double standard here that we talked about, and he directly goes after Piers Morgan for his hypocrisy, and this was so satisfying to watch. You pretend that you care about protecting students, but you only care about protecting one side, whereas the other side is assaulted. No, I don't, actually. And, and, no, because and, if and no, debased no, no. and humiliated, okay, let me respond. And all you want to do is let cancel me respond. their speech. You want, you're part of cancel culture, and admit it right now. Can I you're respond? You're talking about protesting people. Can I respond? America can I respond? Americans. By the way. Okay, this by, is not the United States of Israel. Fine. America. Uh, All right, Americans you made your point. to Jay. protest a let, foreign government. Okay, let me respond. Just to be you've clear. You've lost the right wing. Just you've to be clear. You've lost the left wing. You've lost America. Just to America's be, not going to stand here fine. and let Israel you can keep dictate shouting or we can who's have allowed a to speak and who's going to be arrested. All right, you can keep I shouting. I gave you 20 minutes to do propaganda, Okay, Piers. Go it, ahead now. It's not propaganda. I, I have many views about all of this. We're talking specifically about the protests at Columbia, which I think you've crossed the line. I, by the way, you talk about cancel culture. I'm entitled to my view without you and Dr. West screaming liar, genocide supporter, and all this other okay, bullshit. Okay, you condemn so, the UCLA so let me just res- Israel's so let me just, thugs. Let me make it clear. Do you, com- you condemn them? I'm the, doing the same thing you wait are. Wait a minute. Do you condemn them? Wait a minute. Are you pro Can I answer the question? I loved every single second of that. And look, you all know I have my disagreements with Jenk. You on other issues, but that right there was brilliant. Credit where it's due. Kudos to Jenk. That is how you effectively combat propaganda. The fact that Americans are losing our right to criticize a foreign government should outrage every single American. There are 38 states with anti-BDS laws. There's multiple bills in the House right now being proposed to further criminalize anti-Israel speech. Not to mention, if you criticize Israel, politicians and media all deem you anti-Semitic by default. It's absurd. And so I am glad to see a smear merchant like Pierce Morgan get called out for that bullshit. And you can tell that he was pissed off. But uh, to that, I say, good. Keep molding, asshole. You're calling these students terrorists as you cover for a genocidal terrorist regime. And it's because Piers Morgan, let's be clear, he's a racist. That's why he's doing all this. He clearly doesn't think that Palestinians are equally human. And later on in the interview, Cornel West says that to his face. And as you're going to see, he did not take it well. When you got massive children at universities and hospitals completely leveled and you have something on your Twitter rather than make that part of the framing of the issue, Mm -hmm. then in fact, you become an extension of propaganda. And that's why I call you a racist because it means then that a Palestinian- How dare you, honestly. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but how dare you? you, I'm sorry, Dr. West. You would not frame it in that way. I'm sorry, but you, you, how dare you call me a racist? How dare you call me racist? How dare you call these students terrorists, you asshole? How dare you call them anti-Semites? It's just, he is so unbelievable. He has no self-awareness. And what Cornell West is doing here is giving him a taste of his own medicine, and he doesn't like it. But the difference between Cornell West's claim of bigotry and Pierce Morgan's claim of anti-Semitism is that Cornell West is actually correct, and Pierce Morgan is wrong and lying, and he's making that claim for disingenuous propagandistic purposes. Racism isn't just explicit, it's also implicit. And in Pierce's framing and reporting, it's evident that he just thinks that Palestinians are inferior to Israelis. That is demonstrated throughout this clip as well. And I say this because, as you're going to see, he has an entirely different standard for protesters that he agrees with. Let's watch. Vigilante thugs last night attacked the peace protesters at UCLA who had done nothing wrong. It was a violent attack. They beat them with sticks. They pepper sprayed them. And yet, I ask you a simple question. You've got now an 20 to 30 minutes of propaganda saying, oh, the Palestinian protesters, the peace protesters, they hate the Jews, they're anti-Semites, anti-Semites, all the Jews are in danger, etc. And I'm saying, of course, let's protect them. 
and then you make it seem like that's the 98% of the issue, when in reality, the only protesters that have been massively violent are the pro-Israel protesters. And to this second, not only did you mention it for that's about two true. and a half seconds I even out of have 20 a video minutes, on my but Twitter you still haven't condemned them. So do you condemn them, people. peers, the violent thugs? I deliberately, thugs I, deliberately, I deliberately held off writing or commenting about what was going on in Colombia for quite a few days. And I will do the same about what happened at UCLA until I've actually established of for course. my... Well, hang on. Super no, convenient. sorry. It happened overnight. Super and I will convenient. wait and see the facts. That is so telling, is it not? Very, very revealing. He's real quick to condemn the anti-war protesters as violent anti-Semites, but when it comes to these pro-Israel agitators who assaulted and maced those students and also shot fireworks into their encampments, you know, he doesn't really want to rush to judgment and he's waiting to see more facts before he makes a judgment. Of course, because we all know that Pierce fucking Morgan of all people is so scrupulous. See, this right here is what Cornell West meant when he called you a racist, Pierce. Pierce Morgan has one standard for pro-Israel agitators and an entirely different standard for anyone advocating for Palestinian human rights. But Pierce further proves their point when he's asked whether or not he condemns the IDF. Look at what he says. We're sick of the overwhelming propaganda. Yeah, I'm pretty sick of being called people. a racist by you guys. So we've all got across the bed. Let Blair, me bring, let me bring. So I asked you whether the IDF were terrorists. Are the IDF a terrorist organization killing innocent yes. children? Yes or no? Oh, I do not believe yes, they're a question, terrorist Pierce. organization, no. Oh, come no, on! They're not. Of course they're, they're terrorists! terrorists. No, they're do you see what I mean? He won't call the IDF a terrorist organization when they are, but he has no problem rightfully calling Hamas a terrorist organization, which they also are. But the question is, why? Hamas killed innocent civilians on October 7th, and Israel has killed much more innocent civilians since October 7th. So what's the difference? Why is one a terrorist, but the other isn't? Why is there this inconsistency and double standard here? See, here's the difference. He can't call the IDF a terrorist organization because he doesn't care about their victims. But he can call Hamas terrorists because he actually does care about their victims. He doesn't view the lives of the victims equally here. And that's why there's this discrepancy, right? And if you think that one group of people is inferior and their lives matter less, uh, there's a word for that, Pierce. Cornell West and Jang said it. And by the way, let's recall what he said about the students at the start of this video. If you're brazenly supporting organizations, groups of people that are deemed to be terrorists by large swathes of the world, does that cross the line? See, the students are crossing the line because they are brazenly supporting terrorists, according to him. First of all, they're not supporting terrorists. They're supporting innocent Palestinians who are not responsible for the crimes of Hamas. And he's telling on himself again here. But second of all, if the students are supposedly terrorist sympathizers, what does that make him? He won't even admit that the IDF is a terrorist organization. But yet, he has the audacity to infer that the students are the real terrorist sympathizers here. Sure, Pierce. Were you acting like a...